everybody, this is Sarah Skopik and you're watching Traffic Musings. So the other day I made a Facebook status that got way too many likes on it uh, about how, well, well how do I describe this? So you know how coloring for adults has come back in style or acceptance as I prefer to call it? If you look around everywhere you can see that there's just a bunch of different coloring books for adults to use what they're, they're you know, just weird designs or they use curse words, I don't know. The whole point is that coloring should not just be for little kids, adults should be able to do it too. That's great. And I started thinking about it, about what I kind of miss doing as a child, uh, that I really, it's not really acceptable for me to do anymore. Coloring was never one of my big things, so I couldn't really relate to that crowd. However, I did discover that there really is something I miss tremendously and that if it weren't for the fact that lack of time and possible judgment, I would be doing right now. And that's, that's playing with dolls and action figures. When I was a kid, I did that a lot more often. No, probably about as often as normal. I just did it for a lot longer than some kids. Uh, pretty sure I was still playing with my Lego figurines and Barbies until I was probably in high school. Not not gonna lie. It's a great stress reliever, I tell I tell you what. If you wanted something that would occupy me for hours, that was the way to do it. Give me a dollhouse or just anything. There's this funny story about that. As I think I told you guys in another episode, um, I was diagnosed with a possible learning disability because I couldn't hear anything. So I was pushed into a preschool and pre-K program um, with a uh, with a helper, with a you know assistant, basically. One of my earliest memories, and my mom can attest that this probably happened, was when I was in a classroom, and I couldn't tell you if it was preschool or pre-K. I, I can't remember, but you know, around the age of three or four or five, I they, we had to do show and tell. I remember this because one of the girls had one of those um, flying fairy dolls. I forget what they're called. The ones were like you rev it up and then it spins around. Anyway, we were supposed to get our carpet squares and sit on the ground and we were gonna do show and tell. Well, I didn't wanna do that. And I kind of remember thinking slightly, now this is of course adult Sarah putting into the mind of child Sarah, so we can't really say what I was thinking, but I kind of remember somewhat thinking about if I, I don't wanna do that. If I cry, I can play with the dollhouse. And kind of the next thing I know, I cry. I, I did some reaction, although my memory kind of blacks out that moment, but I know, and realistically, that's what I did. And I was then taken to the dollhouse. And I remember being allowed to play with the dollhouse while everyone else had to sit on the carpet squares for show and tell. And that's apparently what, what I did. This was, I was infamous for this. I just wanted to play with the dollhouse. And ever since I was younger, that's all I wanted to do. And it's because I was so story and action oriented that that was honestly the best kind of mode of play for me. So when I was younger, I didn't get like tons of Barbie dolls, but I got quite a few. Um, I had a friend actually who her family collected a bunch and they had this huge skate, you know, place, play set for it. And I remember I, when I, I loved going over to their house because there was just, there was enough for everybody to make up their own homes and their own stories and such. And that's what I wanted to do. That's what I always loved doing. I also bought those Belleville Lego characters. If you don't know what they are, look them up. They used to be really, really awesome. Now they're super lame, but they used to be really cool. As my brother described them, the best action figures in Legos because you could move your elbows, your knees, and your wrists, and the uh, the feet and everything like that, and there were lots of customization. Not as much customization as normal Legos because a lot of it was pre-built, a lot of the, the structures and such, and it was very much oriented towards girls because it was all princessy stuff, which I didn't mind because I loved fantasy princessy stuff, but that's kind of was the whole point. They tried to do a more realistic one, but I always preferred the fantasy stuff. My brother wanted, always wanted to play with games with me with those dolls and I think that's also where a lot of my you know storytelling and stuff and, and such comes from because he was also kind of into you know playing with action figures and Legos and we would often play together we would make up these crazy stories okay usually he would make them up and I would do the character reactions but that's different anyway and so we would play with beanie babies and bionicles and this Belva Lego dolls and stuff like that and I was always you know restructuring recreating and that was kind of my thing. And to be honest, I kind of miss doing it. I have not let go of my Belva Legos because 
I I just I can't like it's this weird thing. I could probably give away my Barbie dolls, but I don't know if I could let go of my Bella Lego dolls. I have so many, and I they're so worn through. Some of the dolls I've had to put like duct tape on them because they started wearing off, and the paint started wearing off too, and such like that. Actually, I used to have no, I still have it. Actually, we haven't given it away yet. I do have like a an actual dollhouse, and my mom would buy pieces of it for me for Christmas for a couple of years, and so I had like a family and and all the rooms set up and stuff like that. Nothing super extravagant, but it was still fun. I remember, I think I was 13. <laughs> Do you guys remember the huge blackout um, about like, gosh, it was almost 10 years ago now? Yeah, I think it was pretty much like, yeah, it was 10 years ago. Holy crap, I'm old. Yeah, it was about like 10 years ago, there was a huge blackout over the summer. I remember because I was in middle school and we did not, and it was just awful because there was no air conditioning. We didn't have water for a couple of days at one point uh, and stuff like that. But we were out of power for over a week. I think two weeks. Main thing, though, was uh, I was bored because, well, they're really, they're, I couldn't do anything electronic. And my brother and I played video games back then. Going outside, it was way too darn hot. And staying upstairs was also way too hot. So I decided uh, that I would spend my days rediscovering my... Uh, my dollhouse that I had when I was like eight. I should also mention the main reason I did this, it was down in the basement, so it was also very cool. It very, you know, it wasn't as hot as the main or the upstairs, because I didn't want to be in my room. So I would go downstairs and just play with the dollhouse all day. My mom thought it was great because I hadn't played with it in a very long time, probably about like four years at this point, because I was younger, and at this point I was 13, so I wasn't really gonna admit I played with dolls. But at that point I didn't care, because I was bored and I missed playing with dolls. And I still do! <laughs> but playing with action figures and dolls, I don't know, like for me it was really important because it was also how I told stories and stuff like that. It was how I, you know, it was how I expressed myself. I was always kind of one of those people that, I wasn't very good at telling stories, but I liked acting things out. I was kind of a natural little actress, as my family apparently, apparently believes. <laughs> so for me, dolls were just the greatest way to do it because I could, you know, verbalize everything they said. Um, I was also kind of embarrassed about it, of course, because I was making up dialogue and stuff and, you know, personalities and storylines and character arcs for these people. And so I'd always have my door shut. But sometimes my brother liked to sleep in my room. This is nothing weird, guys. It's just that I had the most comfortable mattress. And this was back when my brother would take naps all the time. So he would honestly, and this is what I'm like, 10 and this is happening. He would honestly come in my room and be like, I'm taking a nap now. I'd go, no, I'm playing with dolls. And he'd go, I don't care. And he would just go and nap in my bed while I had to try to play dolls in front of him without making it awkward. He probably doesn't remember he did this. He has a terrible memory, but whatever. I'm just going to say that happened. Uh, the other reason, of course, I Belleville Legos always a soft spot in my heart is because it's what inspired uh, the main, my main novel that I'm working on right now. Uh, that I've been working on for eight years because I don't have time to dedicate myself to it. Anyway, it'll probably be finished when I'm 60. It's fine. George R. R. Martin made it work. Because <laughs> it was uh, the story that I'm writing is actually was based off of uh, a game that my brother and I used to play with my Belleville dolls, and it included using baby babies, his bionicles, and all that kind of stuff. And it was just based and uh, it was based on this grand, you know, adventure, very Final Fantasy esque uh, kind of story. And of course, for book reasons, I had to, you know, scale a little bit differently. It was very like video game style kind of story, but I had to kind of make it a little different. Anyway, that's a whole other episode. That one. I guess my point is, is I miss playing with dolls, and I think the next time I'm going home. I'm going to clean my room and set up my Belleville collection, and we're just going to go to town with it because, darn it, if coloring is acceptable, so is playing with dolls. And the amount of people who like that status tells me I'm, that, that it's true. Or they just pity me or think I'm weird. Um, that's probably more likely, but we're not going to talk about it. Question, what, what childhood activity do you miss doing? That's all I got for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope something amazing happens to you. And without further ado, I hope to see you all in the next episode.